Today, we venture into the outer depths of our solar system. The furthest out planet, Neptune, was the last planet in our solar system to be discovered. Unseen from Earth, unknown for most of history, even today we still know very little about it. One of Neptune's greatest mysteries is its large moon Triton. Following the discovery of Uranus in 1781, orbital characteristics strongly implicated the existence of another planet, even further out, even deeper into the outer reaches of our solar system. Neptune was the last ice giant to be discovered in 1846, but even before it was discovered it had been mathematically indicated by inconsistencies in Uranus's orbit. Only 17 days after Neptune was discovered, astronomer William Lasell, on suggestion of John Herschel himself, discovered a major moon, which was later called Triton, orbiting the planet. It was initially known only as the satellite of Neptune, and it wouldn't be until 1949 until a second moon was discovered around Neptune. While Neptune was named after the Roman god of the sea, the moon was named after the son of his Greek counterpart, Triton. Triton's mystery began when astronomers discovered its retrograde orbit, meaning the moon orbits in the opposite direction opposed to the planet's rotation. This is weird because it could not have naturally formed that way. It strongly indicated Triton did not originate as a moon of Neptune. Its orbit is also highly inclined as well as on continuous decay further strengthening this theory. Predictions are that in 3.6 billion years the moon will fall through the planet's Rouge limit and crash into Neptune or be disintegrated into a ring system. Moons in retrograde orbits cannot form in the same region as the planets they orbit, so Triton must have been captured from elsewhere. With Neptune on the edge of our solar system, this elsewhere is likely to be the Kuiper belt a large ring of asteroids and planet-like objects on the edge of our solar system. Most famously, Pluto is from this region. Finally, Triton is only slightly larger than Pluto and nearly identical in composition, which makes this theory nearly certain at this point. Planets capturing objects as moons is nothing new. We see Mars today with two captured asteroid moons, for example. Triton today dominates the Neptunian moon system, making up over 99.5% of its total mass. This imbalance may reflect the elimination of many of Neptune's original satellites, following Triton's capture. Usually, when an object approaches a planet, it moves too fast to be captured, meaning something had to have slowed down Triton. It's been suggested that before capture, Triton could have been part of a binary system, similar to Pluto and Charon, which would explain how it was slowed down enough for capture. During this capture, it destabilized the already existing moon system of the planet, and it's likely Neptune's original moons were ejected or crashed into the planet then. Today, Triton is the 7th largest moon and 16th largest object in the solar system. The surface of Triton is covered in a thin layer of frozen nitrogen and a rocky metallic core. It's estimated that water ice makes up between a sixth and a third of the moon's composition. Both the ice and nitrogen, however, are frozen deeply solid at Triton's average surface temperature of negative 235 degrees Celsius, which is only 38 degrees above absolute zero. It has a rather flat terrain, never varying more than a kilometer, which as a Dutchman I can appreciate. Strangely, Triton has very little craters on its surface. This implies that the surface is geologically young. But Triton is too far away from the sun to support a liquid mantle. Something else must be reshaping its surface. To answer that, we must take a look at the moon's inner composition. It is thought to have a rocky and metallic interior with a possible subglacial ocean. This provides a possible cause for the changing surface, as the liquid ocean periodically bursts through the icy surface, in the form of icy geysers. When the faint light of the sun hits the surface of Triton, it heats the nitrogen ice ever so slightly, weakening it sufficiently for the underneath liquids to burst through. Only a few degrees are enough to turn the nitrogen back into liquid, which then erupts violently. This gas then lingers above Triton, forming a thin atmosphere. 
but it is still thick enough to support cloud formations, as well as wind. These geysers dot the surface of the moon, reshaping the surface ever so often, spewing up material from deep underneath the ice, and organic molecules have been found on Triton. If those were spewed up by the geysers, could conditions in the ocean below be habitable? Right now it's hard to find out. Triton has only ever been visited once by the Voyager 2, when it flew by Neptune in 1989, over 30 years ago. And there is only so much we can learn by observing it from Earth. So without further study, there is little more we can learn about this mysterious moon in the outer depths of our solar system. Visiting Neptune, a world on the edge of our solar system, is a very difficult logistical process. Triton is so far away that most space missions into the deep solar system will get prioritized for Jupiter or Saturn, as they are much closer and thus easier to visit, as well as having a bunch of cool moons of their own. Until we do manage to send a new mission, Triton will remain a cold and mysterious world in the depths of our solar system. So yeah, I hope I was able to pique your interest with that video. Triton is an exceptionally understudied object of the outer solar system, and there is a lot we could still learn by closer examination. I do hope we get to venture deeper into our solar system in the coming decades, as there is too much we still don't know about this mysterious part of our solar system. Though I totally understand why researchers for the moment want to focus on Jupiter and Saturn first, I think it's important as well not to lose sight of the marvels that lie even further beyond in our solar system. So yeah, that's another video out. I've been working on getting this channel out of the, uh, state it's been in since the three demonetizations. Oh, and by the way, there's now a second GG channel dedicated to my world building project, ESPA. I've been wanting to make another GG channel for ages and I'm happy to finally be able to do so. On the channel I make videos about a fictional planet I'm creating, which is an excruciatingly slow process, but it's something I've been doing since before I even made a channel, and I greatly enjoy it, so I thought I might as well share it with you folks. So you should definitely go subscribe to it if you are interested in that. That said though, this is still the main channel, my focus will remain here, as it should. With that in mind, I think I already have an idea for the next video, so this has been Yiji Science and thank you for watching.